Hallelujah be to Jesus. Glory be to God. Father, we worship you this evening. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We welcome your presence into this place this evening, O oh God. As your people, we celebrate you. As your children, we magnify you. As your children, O oh God, we are here to say you are our Savior. And we bless your name. We bless your name. We still remember from whence you picked us up, O oh God. And how far you have brought us. And how much you have accomplished in our lives. Tonight we bless you. Tonight we worship you. Tonight we exalt you. Tonight we magnify you. You have been our great preserver. You have been our great deliverer. You have been our mighty conqueror. You have been our great shepherd. You have been our everlasting Lord. You have been our great master. And we worship you tonight. And we bless you tonight. And we celebrate you tonight. And we adore you tonight. And we say you are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our praise. Yes, Lord, we will not wait for you to cause the stones to bless and to magnify your name. We take our place in your presence, O oh God, and we worship you and we magnify you. We thank you so much for being so kind to us, O oh God. Tonight be exalted. Tonight be glorified. Tonight be magnified. Let thy countenance shine upon us, O oh God. Let thy countenance shine upon us tonight, O oh God. And let our gathering be unto thee, my Father. Have your way in this place, my Lord. Have your way in this place, my Lord. Rest upon every individual here, my Master. And as many as are watching us, oh God, from wherever they are watching us, Lord, let your hand touch them, let your spirit visit them, let your power rest mightily upon them. In the name of Jesus, we give you worship tonight. We give you praise tonight. We give you adoration tonight. We welcome your presence into this place, Lord. Let your glory fill this sanctuary, my Father. Let your great presence mantle upon us individually and corporately. And pour forth thy blessings tonight. I give you worship. I give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give me a lot of big clap tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah be to Jesus. Amen. You may be still in the presence of the Lord tonight. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome our dear friends watching us live on, on Facebook tonight. Amen. Welcome to the Wedding Action Church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Now let's let's get into the word of the Lord briefly tonight. Amen. If you have your Bibles and you can, please um, turn your Bibles with me to the book of First Peter. First Peter. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter. First Peter chapter 5. Amen. They got to look at verse 5. I'm just going to read through the scriptures and, and speak as the Spirit of God will inspire me. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5. And I read from verse 5. And it says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yes, all of you be subject one to another. And all of you be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So the Bible makes it clear to us that every proud person already has a resistor. And this individual that resists or hinders or opposes or stands in the way of the proud man or proud woman is God Almighty. Oh, so it's a very dangerous business then to be proud. Hallelujah. It is a, it is a deadly business to be proud. Now sometimes you can go to church and, and be proud and you don't even know you are proud. Sometimes there are people that think they are very, very humble, but they're very, very proud. They don't even know that. Hallelujah. But the Bible says God himself resists the proud. He fights the proud. 
It stands in the way of the proud person. Hallelujah. So it's very deadly. Amen. It's a deadly business. Hallelujah to be proud. But look, look at what it says. But give a grace to the humble. So when God finds somebody who is humble, hallelujah, at heart and in spirit, then he provides grace, unmerited favor. He enables, hallelujah, the humble person. Praise be to Jesus. Come on, talk to you. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, when God, the word says, when God sees the proud person, he hinders them, he fights them, he stands in their way. But when God sees a humble person, he enables them. He quickens their steps. He gives them what they do not have. He makes it possible for them to accomplish that which under normal circumstances they shouldn't be able to accomplish. Because they found a humble person. But when he sees a proud person, he fights the proud man. He fights the proud woman. He hinders the proud person. But he gives grace unto the humble. If you are humble, you will discover the grace of God. When you see a proud person, stay away from them. Don't hang around somebody who is proud and full of themselves. Stay away. Because God is going to be fighting such an individual. God is going to be hindering such an individual. God says, I will resist such a person. But hang out with the individual who is humble in spirit. Amen? Amen? But please, don't let quietness deceive you. Somebody could be very quiet, but they are not humble. Being quiet don't make you humble. At all. <laughs> the person could be very, very quiet and gentle also, but very proud. And God knows. You see, the Bible says, man looks on the outside, but guess what? God checks us out in the heart. And all this goes on in the heart. Praise be to Jesus. If you are proud, humble yourself. If you are humble, more grace to you. Amen? Amen? So verse 6, verse 6 says, Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Glory to God. So the scriptures go on to, then goes on to admonish us and to encourage us. And it says, Beloved, it doesn't matter how, what state you find yourself tonight, but the recommendation of the word of the Lord is that humble yourself. Humble yourself. Bring yourself down in the eyes of the Lord. Relax yourself in him. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he may exalt you in due time. Humility, as far as God is concerned, is the man that turns his life or her life totally and completely unto him and embraces him and says that I abandon everything that I am and I embrace you. I humble myself under thy mighty hand. How and what I feel doesn't matter. It's how and what you feel that matters, Lord. So you speak the word. Hallelujah. And it gets done in my life. You turn your life over completely unto him. Now you don't run the show. He runs the show. Before you do anything, you take it to God. You say, my father, this is what has come into my mind. In prayer, what do you think about it? And if he says no, then the answer is no. But a proud person can never take no. This is what I want to do. And I don't care what anybody else thinks. When you live like that, you die young. Because the Bible says, the backslider hard heart shall be filled with their own ways. There must be room for correction in our lives. Every one of us. Allow room for God to speak to you. If you're a child of God, hallelujah, make up your mind that it's the counsel of the Lord regarding my life that I look for. I seek for it. May the opinion of God matter to you. Let what God thinks about your life, your situation matter to you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, 
says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways, and his thoughts higher than our thoughts. So, as a man, hallelujah, we humble ourselves and we embrace the thinking pattern of God so that our lives will conform to his. And God says, when I find such a person, I give them grace. Somebody lift up your hands and receive grace from the hands of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I receive grace from your hands. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I receive grace. Hallelujah. It is supernatural enablement. Supernatural enablement. So, so when you turn your life over unto the Lord and you humble yourself, hallelujah, under the mighty hand of God, don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about what they think about you. Yes, because, I mean, it may look like you are deprived. Some will think you are crazy. Others will think you are foolish. It doesn't matter what you think. God says yes. Humble yourself under my mighty hand. But there is something called you, Susan. And I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Every one of us here tonight, and those of you listening to me, there is a due season for your promotion. There is a due season regarding your life. There is a time that God himself has marked on this calendar to do you good. So you keep believing, you keep trusting, you keep serving, you keep loving, keep being obedient, hallelujah. Keep serving your king. Things around you may change, but your affection for the Lord should never change. May it increase, may it be on the increase, hallelujah. May you not drop in the affection for Jehovah. Continue to love him, continue to serve him, continue to be dedicated to him, continue to humble yourself under his mighty hand. And your due season will come because God is faithful. God is faithful. So there is a due time for you. There is a due time for me. It doesn't matter what you do. Until that time comes, nothing changes. And God is faithful. So we know that his time for your life will surely come. The book of Job says, All the days of my appointed times are like wait till my change come. Be humble enough. To wait for the timings of the Holy Ghost. Because it shall surely come. But when that time hits, and when God is finished with you, even your worst critics cannot find anything to say about you. When all is said and done, and God has visited you, and blessed you, and promoted you, and increased you, hallelujah. I mean, everybody will see it. And they all will point at you and say, look at what God has done with him. Look at what God has done with her. We saw her humble herself under the mighty hand of God. And the word of the Lord has come to pass in her life. She has been exalted. For God is faithful. He has not asked us to serve him in vain. So humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due season. Your due season may be tonight. Your due season may be tomorrow. Your due season may be the day after tomorrow. Get that into your spirit tonight. That there is a time allotted for your blessing, for your promotion, and for your increase. And for your blessing. You know why? And, and the beauty about it is that that is why at certain times in your life, when you least expect a breakthrough, a breakthrough hits your life. When you least expect an opportunity, then the door opens. Even when you have not prayed for something, all of a sudden, blessings begin to flow into your life and you're wondering, my God, this is the weakest time in my life and my prayer life is not even as solid as before. What is going on? It is called a due time. It is called a due time. You have served God and God has been faithful to you. So beloved, let's learn to walk in humility before our God. Let the how God feels and thinks about your life matter to you. In every situation, in every situation, before you do anything, talk to God about it. Run it by the Holy Ghost. And wait for his opinion. Don't ever do anything by your own strength. The Bible says trust the Lord with all of your heart. 
and lean on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So whatever you do, acknowledge him. Say, Lord, you know what? I turn this over to you. What do you think? Lead me, guide me, tell me. Father, I know of my own self, I can do nothing. You are almighty. So strengthen me, empower me, lead me, guide me, give me the wisdom to accomplish this, and God will help you. God will help you. So let's continue to read. It says, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. My God, what a beautiful statement out of the word of the Lord. The Bible says, cast your, all your cares upon him. Because he cares for you. Just understand that God cares about you and he cares for you. So go to him in confidence. Cast all your cares upon him. Take it to him. He's a prayer answering God. But you must believe. So tonight, be assured of this fact that God cares for you. God cares about you. Those of you watching me tonight, God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, he cares about you. And if we are the only person here on earth, he will still send his only begotten son to come and die on the cross for you. So God cares. He cares about us. So when you are approaching him, bringing your curse and your burdens, the longing of your heart to him, come with this understanding that already he cares for me. And leave the presence of God with the peace of God that passes all understanding. Tonight, what are your cares? What are your concerns? What are your challenges? Take it to him. Cast your curse upon him. For he cares for you. He cares about you. If it pertains to your life, he cares. If it pertains to your family, he cares. If it pertains to your business, he cares. Everything about you is important to him. The scriptures tell us that even the very hairs on our head, they are numbered. And they are calculated and they are tabulated. Hallelujah. Your hair is important to God. How much for that which you will eat? How much for that which you will put on? How about your health? He does care. May your confidence in him increase tonight. May your confidence in God increase tonight. Let the understanding enter into your spirit. That it doesn't matter who doesn't care about you. Some of your family members don't care about you. They hit the delete button regarding your name a long time ago. You don't exist. But as far as God is concerned, you are so important and precious. So he has loved you for everlasting love. And with love and kindness, he draws you unto himself. Understand this tonight. The Lord cares about us. He watches over you. He will preserve you. He will provide for you. He will do that which no man can do for you. Serve him. Love him. Be obedient to him. Be faithful to God. And God will be faithful to you. The Bible tells us in Psalm 37, it says, you mark the upright man. The end of that man is peace. The Lord cares about you. Amen? Let's continue to read the word of the Lord. So he says, verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren, that are in the world. Amen. So verse 8 and 9 says that we should be sober. Every one of us we should be calm. Don't be agitated. Don't be agitated. After you've cast all your cares upon the Lord, you can't walk around agitated. you got to be calm. Be sober. Also, you have to be alert. Be vigilant. May your spiritual eyes be opened. May your spiritual ears be opened. Hallelujah. And may your tongue be anointed. And may your life be anointed. Hallelujah. So that you can be vigilant. Be spiritually equipped. Be alert. Be sensitive. When you cast all your cares upon the Lord, there is a way and manner that you conduct yourself. 
Don't get involved in everything. Don't get your nose into everybody's business. As a soldier, you got to be alert. If you are walking around, snooping around, and, and your nose is in this one's business, your nose is in this one's business, you know what is going on in the intensity of Houston. You are not alert. You're going to be cut off God. You, you can't afford that. You are a soldier for Jesus Christ. So be alert. Be vigilant. May your eyes be open. It doesn't matter what the enemy breaks, you'll be able to discover it from afar off. Some of you are still taken over by the flesh. You can't even see what the devil is doing. That's what pride does to you. If you are proud, you can't tell what the devil is doing. I mean, he, he will mess you up. You can't even tell. And the devil knows. So be alert. Be vigilant. Open your eyes. Understand what is going on. Everything judged by the Spirit of God. And you always be on top and you be ahead of the equation. Eh? Hallelujah. So he says, be vigilant. He says, the reason why you, you are instructed to be vigilant is because you're, you have an adversary. Your adversary, whose name is the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. You have an adversary. If you have an opponent, if you have an enemy against you, you can't just behave anyhow. You, got, you have to be circumspect in the way you walk. Your steps must be ordered. Your actions must be ordered. Everything must be measured. You should be led completely by the Spirit of God. You can't just walk into a place and you see people talking and you go and join. You've got to listen first. And see if what they are saying, you have an idea about it. If you don't, you keep quiet. And even if you do have an idea, it doesn't mean you should share it. Praise be to Jesus Christ. You don't just jump into anything. Yeah, it doesn't matter what folks are saying. You charge before you speak. You are alert. You are vigilant to the glory of God. Because you have an adversary. The Bible says his name is the devil. And he's like a roaring lion. He walks about seeking whom he may devour. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us this. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. So the Bible says the way to resist the devil. Amen. Contrary to popular opinion, is actually to be steadfast in the faith. Don't give up. That is how you resist the devil. Stand strong. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That is how you resist the enemy. You are steadfast. Because many times when things break into our lives and we encounter situations and circumstances, the next thing is to throw in the white towel of surrender. It's like, forget it. I'm tired. I'm, I'm moving on. God says, no. Stand strong. Be steadfast. Praise be to Jesus Christ in the faith. And he says, and have this understanding, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Tonight, understand that you are brothers and sisters in the world that don't come from your mother's womb. We all believe the same thing, and that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he's coming again. So we've got our brothers and sisters all over the world. Many of them don't look like us. But God says, hallelujah, they are brothers and sisters. We are the same father. And tonight, he also tells us that these brothers and sisters, they are going through what you and I, we are going through. Hallelujah, all over the world. Those in China are experiencing the same thing. Those, those in Germany are experiencing the same thing. Those, those in Africa are experiencing the same thing. Those in America are experiencing the same thing. Wherever they are, hallelujah, they are experiencing the same thing. So you and I, our trials and our difficulties and our challenges are not unique at all. Because the devil comes and he tells you, you are the only one going through what you're going through. Everybody is having a great time. It is only you that is broke. It is only you that can't pay your rent. It is only you that can't pay this. It is only you that cannot do this. The devil is a liar. Bible says our brethren all over the world are having similar experiences. So it's not unique at all. So be strong. Be steadfast. Unmovable. May your loins be girded with this knowledge 
May your mind be guarded with this understanding. My brethren, everyone, we are all going through the same thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so it's not just me, it's not just you. It's not just me, it's not just you. Everyone, everybody's got a story, and everybody has a testimony. Praise be to Jesus Christ. So, tonight, be at rest wherever you are. Be at peace wherever you are. Your situation is not unique. You are going to die from this. Hallelujah. You, your tomorrow is, will be greater. You won't die from this. God will be faithful to you. Hallelujah. He will manifest his power in your life. The scriptures tell us that the eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those who are loyal unto him. If your heart is loyal, hallelujah, his eyes are fixed on you. He will show himself strong. When you are weak, hallelujah, then are you strong. When there is no hope, then out of nowhere will emerge deliverance for your life. That is who God is. Be strong tonight. Be steadfast tonight. Be unmovable tonight. May you be encouraged. Maybe you are sick and you feel so bad and you're asking all kinds of questions. Child of God, the maker of heaven and earth stands beside you. He is your great physician. And tonight I speak healing into your heart. I speak healing into your life. I speak healing into your life. May the Lord God Almighty make you whole. May he give you rest. And may he lift you up from that bed of sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. For he is faithful. He is faithful. So look at what verse 10 says. Beautiful verse 10. Says, but the God of all grace. Mm, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered for a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and then settle you. Hallelujah. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 My God, I'm so excited about this word. Says, so see, with all the suffering and the challenges and the difficulties that you are dealing with, the Bible says it is for a while. It is not forever. It is for a while. After you have suffered for a while, your trouble is coming to an end. Your trouble has an expiration date on it. It is not forever. One of these days, whether that trouble likes it or not, it must come to an end. Child of God, be strong. Be committed and be faithful. Stand strong. Your situation is not permanent. It is not permanent. It is temporal. It is coming to an end. So don't let it rule your life and control you. And don't allow your situation to run your life and to control you. But rather, keep your head looking forward and your eyes fixed on the deliverance of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. Don't fix your eyes on your circumstances. Don't fix your eyes on your trouble. Don't let your trouble dominate you. May your eyes be fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is him that brings you deliverance. Because your trouble and your situation is for a season. It is not forever. And one of these days, you will look for it and you will find it no more. The word of the Lord says that the Egyptians that you see today, you will not see them no more forever. If Egypt came to an end, according to the word, your trouble is coming to an end. Your situation is coming to an end. For the Bible says that God of all grace, you know what he will do? He will perfect you. He will establish you. He will strengthen you. And then finally, he will settle you. After you've suffered for a while. After you've suffered for a while. So even tonight, what you are dealing with was allowed into your life. If God did not allow it, it cannot come. And he also provided a way of escape. And he says, after you've suffered for a while, you know what? He will visit you. Hallelujah. He himself, he says, I will establish. Finally, he says, I will sit. He will put you in a large place. That which you call a dream shall become a reality. That which you used to look to, say, my God, is this possible? By the time you realize it is part of your life. In 
And then others will look out to you and say, that is the dream that I want. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, you become somebody else's dream. You know, let be strong tonight. Be faithful tonight. Be committed tonight. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. In due time, in due season, He will exalt you. If you do not faint, if we do not give up, if we don't resort to our own ungodly ways, we stick with the plan of God. God will glorify His name in your life. Tonight, you may be having a difficult time in your marriage. And every word that you are hearing is pack your bag and get out. The word of the Lord to you tonight is to be steadfast, unmovable. Don't walk out. God will help you. This too shall come to an end. Everything came to pass. Nothing came to stay. If you are watching me this evening and you are looking for a job, you've looked everywhere and nothing seems to work. And you are like, is there no bow in Gilead? God is sending me to tell you tonight that keep looking. He has prepared a special place for you. It's just like your, your shoe. Your feet will fit in perfectly. So don't give up. Continue to send your resumes out. Continue to make the phone calls. Continue to call the advertisement and the agencies. There's a place designed for you. Don't give up. Be steadfast. Be steadfast. Your unemployment is just for a season. May the Spirit of God make a way for you tonight. May the Lord Himself visit you. May He give you favor. The powers that you need. May He, may he work you into their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the places where you, you apply and the application was discarded. May the Holy Ghost Himself reopen those times. May you receive strange phone calls to the glory of God tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give the Lord a good clap tonight. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a good clap tonight. Praise be to Jesus Christ. So He will perfect you, He will establish you. Amen. He will strengthen us and then He will settle you. It is not over until God says it is over. Beloved, be encouraged. We are living in strange times right now. This virus has stolen our, our joy and stolen, stolen life from people and, and, and it's still fear everywhere that you go. That is why I encourage you tonight. Continue to strengthen the brethren. Continue to speak into the lives of people. Pray for them. Bless them. Don't add on to their problems. People have, have problems already, amen. Don't tell them, don't, don't go and add on to their problems. Don't make yourself a burden. These are the days when we walk in the grace and the glory of God. And be mindful of the person, hallelujah, who's sitting next to you. And, and think about their needs and, their, and, and, and care about them, hallelujah. These are the times when you have to begin to talk to people. How are you doing? And listen for the answer. Because we are living in a world right now that is D, not doom, D. So it's like somebody has turned the lights down. And people's moods are very, very, very low right now. And the morale is very low. So you be the spark. Make up your mind. I will encourage the brethren. I will strengthen the brethren. I will speak into their lives. I will not magnify their problems. I will tell them about the power of God. Receive grace from the hands of the Lord tonight. May He give you grace. May He enable you. May He make you a blessing. May the Lord make you a blessing. May the Lord make you a blessing. This is the time to shine. Father, we give you worship tonight. Lord, we give you adoration tonight. Those of you watching me by Facebook, lift up your hands. Those of you in this place, let's rise up to our feet. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. There are those of you watching me lift up your hands tonight. My Father, I thank you for my brethren, oh God, watching me tonight from all over the world. Because this broadcast goes everywhere. As your hands are lifted up, oh God, oh my, I pray in Jesus' name for them and for their families. That your hand be heavy upon them. That your anointing be strong upon their lives. Whatever their needs be tonight. Whatever their longings be, whatever their concerns be, a man can only do so much for themselves. 
to rise up on their behalf. As many as are sick, heal them. As many as are sick, wherever they are, heal them tonight. You are the balm of Gilead. You are a great physician. By your stripes we are healed and we are made also heal them tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. As many as have been paralyzed by fear, I arrest that ugly spirit. I break its power over their lives. And I release them to blossom and to flourish in that presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bless our friends, O God. Meet their needs and make a way for them tonight. Receive peace from the hands of the Lord. I minister the peace of God into your life that passes all understanding. Receive it from the hands of the Holy Ghost tonight. In the name of Jesus. According to your faith, receive peace and rest. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless all of you. See you next time. Amen. Remember to um, like our page and uh, share. God bless you. Amen.